The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. A big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. It's warm. I haven't realized until now just how cold my body is. <gasps> A dead body! It's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. But who could have done this? There must be some clues around. There's a letter clutched in his hand. His final words? Or a clue left by the killer? The missing candlestick, and it seems to be the murder weapon. The body is still warm. He cannot have been dead for much longer than I have been alive. Did he have to die for me to live? This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of this story. Those are a lot of gargoyles. Leupold, Brunhilde, Arthur, Maya, Lena, Ismildor, Ether, and Josef. In that order. It's an old clock. Tick tock, tick tock. The doctor's handwriting. I know it well by now.
Look, a perfect sphere. Let's see if I can get two parallel lines to intersect. A stuffed raven atop a bust of Pallas Athena. What a cheerful decoration. Let's call them Annabelle and Dupin. That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible combination of letters. I wonder how much room they would take. There's a finite amount of letters, but unless we acknowledge a maximum length of a word, there would still be an infinite number of combinations, and the library would have to be infinitely large. I should sit down and write a story. But with all these journals and diary pages lying around, it seems like I already may have. Look at all these old toys. Wind-up dolls, music boxes, and mechanical trains all around. I think this used to be a private hobby of the eccentric Dr. Wolfram's, before he got into the whole corpse business. Another portrait. It says her name is Francisca Canosa, an old relative, no doubt. But I wonder how she relates to the von Trauerschloss family. I'm not going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow, if I want to proceed. Interesting, but no. Another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. This room looks completely abandoned. I suppose this is what happens when you're down to a skeleton crew of only one maid, no matter how fantastic she is. One more Belladonna letter. Let's read about this Clara figure. There's a bottle of milk out here. I wonder how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. No wonder in this cold. This must be the family cemetery. Yet, baby Lucas rests in an urn in the dining room. Why is that? It says, Snowflake the pet cat. How cute. The stone is so old and the name is worn off. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. A note.
What a marvelous mausoleum. The plaque says, Francisca Canosa. This must be the resting place of the lady from the portrait in the study. Yes, those are indeed boxes. More letters. Can someone tell me what happened to poor Clara? natural object standing in a pot, a man-made object. The plant can consume nutrition and grow bigger, and the pot can't. Neither of them can think. So what about me, then? I can think. I know that. But am I natural or man-made? An ordinary pot with some dirt in it. Isn't this a perfectly sufficient tool for creating beautiful life? This lantern might prove to be the very first thing that actually manages to shed some light on my situation. I'll keep it. Nothing inside. <laughs> Belladonna. This little plant has caused a lot of trouble. For a flower, it's not particularly beautiful, but for a murder weapon, it sure is. It's a large tree. Looks very peaceful. Couldn't I have been reincarnated into one of those instead of being forced back into this mess? Look. A journal page was hiding behind the plant. 